Welcome to Fran Coach's Franchising 101 podcast series. Here we talk about all things franchising. What is it all about? Is it for you? How do you find the best one to own? And so much more. Now your host, Tim Parmeter. Hello, everyone, and thanks again for tuning in to Fran Coach's Franchising 101 podcast. I am Tim Parmeter, founder and CEO of Fran Coach, and your podcast host. Today is another installment of our segment that we refer to as In Their Words. Uh, I am so incredibly biased because this is my favorite section, uh, a segment of the show, because here we get to talk to and listen to and hear from Fran Coach clients who have become franchise owners. Uh, we're going to talk about their background, what led them to consider franchise ownership, how they navigated the process with the Fran Coach team, as well as what franchise they chose and how it's gone so far. Um, this one's even cooler because uh, this guest was a podcast listener. Uh, so we've gone full circle. These are always super fun. Uh, so this is his uh, 15-ish minutes of fame uh, with all seven of our followers. So before we get to that, uh, we always have to kind of remind people of who the heck we are. Um, my friend Coach is a national search firm dedicated to working with individuals interested in owning a franchise. Uh, we're partnered with well over 600 of the top franchisors in the country, spanning nearly 70 industries. Our goal is to help clients find the absolute best franchise to own. And the goal of the Franchising 101 podcast series is to educate people on all aspects of franchise ownership. Uh, so that's us, all the fun little disclaimers. Now let's get into our amazing guest today. Uh, joining us uh, from a faraway place called Mesa, Arizona, uh, is Mr. Stephen Hatley. Steve, thanks for joining us today, my friend. Yeah, Tim, it's uh, an absolute pleasure to be here. Uh, well, let's see how you feel about that here in the next 20 minutes, brother. So uh, we'll see how it goes. So um, no, enjoy, enjoy chatting with you um, throughout all of this. It's been great to get to know you. And so excited to kind of share your story from um and and like so many corporates to get me the hell out of there into doing my own thing so give uh give, give everybody a little background on on you before you got into uh this franchising thing tell us a little about steve yeah uh gosh where do i start um so I'm, I'm, i i live what i consider to be a very uh, uh blessed and Fortunate lifestyle. I'm, I'm, I'm surrounded by three uh, amazing uh, women every day. My beautiful wife Ashley and our uh, two little girls, Brooklyn and Taylor, um, ages about three and a half and, and, and one and a half. So that kind of answers what, what what takes up our uh, our spare time. <laughs> but, uh, but no, you know we're we're very fortunate to live here in Phoenix. So uh, live a very active lifestyle. Spend a lot of time uh, you know outdoors. Um, random hall pass. You'll, you'll certainly find me on the golf course with some buddies, but, uh, you know, we're young parents. We've got two little ones. So we're, we're, we're definitely fully embracing that lifestyle and just, uh, uh, you know, taking it day by day and raising those little girls. But, uh, you know, I had a, I had a great childhood, um, you know, real, real tight family unit. We were, uh, um, as a, a air force brat, we were actually stationed to Phoenix on my, uh, uh 10th birthday. So I moved here when I was 10. I'm not a you know true native to the Valley, but I, I grew up here, went to high school here, graduated from Arizona State, and I've been very fortunate to stay out here, um, you know, working with a number of different companies, but always had an opportunity to kind of stay here in Phoenix and build some roots. Um, so again, you know, Phoenix is home and we're uh, 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 just look, have, having a lot of fun right now. It's uh, some, some big changes on the horizon, but uh, yeah, it's kind of a little bit of, about the personal side. Um, you know, gosh, Professionally, you know, I Tim, I graduated in uh, May of 2009. So, you know, we were <laughs> we, we we were just kind of coming out of uh, you know the housing crisis. It was uh, kind of a very interesting economy, but I certainly didn't let that you know stop my just efforts of uh, graduate college. You got to get a job, right? So I was I was very fortunate to uh, you know graduate on a um, you know, Thursday or Friday, kind of party hard through the weekend and uh, rolled right into my first job Monday morning. And, uh, you know, I, I, I tell folks I, I grew up professionally in the uh, uh, facilities management industry. So I had a kind of a, a, a small stint working for a golf management company actually uh, here in Scottsdale, only to be re recruited back to the uh, original company that I started with. But, uh, you know, that first company out of college, um, how I would describe it, you know, within the industry is um, uh, a 
very large commercial uh, janitorial firm, but really a, a bundled soft services provider. So they specialized in uh, providing commercial services to you know, big pharma, uh, manufacturing clientele, um, anywhere where there might be like a clean room or a lab that re required a very specific type of cleaning, landscape services, pest control, snow removal, um, you know, sustainability services. So, um, you know, you can imagine buddies, I, you know, graduate from college, I've, I've got my shiny finance degree and off to become a janitor. But uh, <laughs> I, I quickly realized um just how incredible uh, that industry would be um, definitely had a significant impact on you know where I am today. Uh, like I said, I spent a, a little over a decade with that uh, first company, or a number of hats, starting operations. Uh, like I said, background in finance, so spent some time in kind of the corporate FP&A world. Um, I tripped into running a, 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 a supply chain team, and then uh, after that, kind of my most recent employer. Um, probably spent the past four-ish years and more of a uh, business development role, jumped across the table, was actually with a, uh, a, a manufacturer. So got a different perspective of the industry, had a blast, um, learned a lot, and, and was really able to, I think, kind of uh, sharpen some of my uh, sales and, and you know, business development skills. And uh, yeah, that's that's from a, from a professional standpoint, that's kind of where I've been hanging out the past 15 years. Nice. And so, well, for, first of all, way, way back to the beginning, um, like, and you, you, you and your lovely bride, uh, who you have um, very much like myself, we both out kicked our coverage <laughs> with our wives. Right. So, um, and beautiful little girls. And clearly that's probably why you don't have any hair from those, those <laughs> two little ones. Right. So, um, and the, You've had this, like, as you talk about your corporate run, like, that was all positive. And most people are like, oh, my gosh, it was terrible. I hated it and blah, blah, all, all this stuff. I mean, you're just kind of a positive, positive dude anyway. But you were doing well. You were having success, right? So what made you even think about getting out of that and doing something for yourself? Yeah, let me... Um... <laughs> I'll, I'll, let me, I'll, I'll try to kind of break this down and kind of the timeline of events, so to speak. But, uh, you know, I think this all kind of goes back to, um, oh, I don't know, uh, November-ish kind of time frame last year. And uh, uh, I just had started, I don't know, um, paying attention to look, just little signals, uh, paying attention to what other folks in my life were doing, buddies, former colleagues, some just kind of made comments. Yeah, you know, I'm kind of thinking about doing something on my own and, um, you know, I, I'll you'll hear me refer to this maybe throughout this conversation, just different trigger moments or, you know, hang, hang on, there, there's something there, kind of pay attention. And uh, I, I don't know if it was um, 2 a.m. nights rocking one of the girls or COVID or whatever, but over the past two years, I, I'm, I'm one of those, you know, victims that just discovered podcasts and there's probably, you know, six or seven that I, I roll through today. And um, at, at the time, I was listening to an episode for the uh, Sean Ryan show and he had a guest on Rob Luna. And I guess for folks that have never heard of Rob, I'm, 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 I'm biased because he's an Arizona state grad and used to live in Mesa, but uh, you know, he's a, <laughs> he's a, he's a wealth advisor and, and, and a regular on one of the uh, you know business outlets. And uh, it, it, he, he was a guest on the show just talking about the economy, uh, wealth building, um, you know, how to, how to, how to generate true you know, income, wealth, et cetera, et cetera. And he made a comment during the interview. I think he, don't quote me, but um, something along the lines of, you know, if I had, if I had nothing but $30,000 to my name, you know, tomorrow, I, I, I'd go start a business. You know, that's, that's kind of the one true way to find some, some uh, you know, build wealth, happiness, kind of control your own lifestyle. And, and there, there just something clicked um, there. I don't know what it was, but there, it, it was just kind of interesting. Um, fast forward to, you know, this is one of those, rare Friday afternoons in December. The girls are still in daycare. My wife and I knocked off early for uh, just go visit one of our favorite little watering holes and just uh, catch up over a couple glasses of wine and just uh, kind of a, a check-in, right? I think those that are um, parents, especially two working parents, um, those are those are those are hard to come by. So as she will tell you, I remember getting in the car that afternoon, leaving that date and, you know, telling Ashley, that's, that's, it's one of the most fun afternoons I've had in, in, in a while just because it was such a great, uh, meaningful conversation. And uh, anyway, in that conversation, you know, I, I, I told Ashley, I, you know, 
don't be worried. I don't want you to stress out or anything. I'm, I'm, I'm not depressed. I'm not unhappy, <laughs> but you know, there's, I've, I've kind of been sitting on something for the past, uh, you know, probably six months or so. I just, I, I, I keep on trying to shush it, but um, I, I'm just missing just a genuine sense of fulfillment in what I'm doing every single day professionally. And I, I, I can tell that that's starting to have an impact on me personally. And, and, and I refuse, you know, to keep on going down this path. So something's got to change. And, uh, you know, I just told her I, it's not necessarily the company. It's not, 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 not what I'm doing per se. It's, it's a much larger, um, you know, just uh, a pain point, you know, kind of hard to describe. And the most frustrating part is I, I, I told Ashley, you know, if I had to go look for a job tomorrow, um, I have no idea where to start. I have no idea what to search, what to look for. Um, I'm very proud of my resume and kind of my experience, but you know, I look at my background and I, I feel like it's this charcuterie board of experience and you know operations and finance and supply chain. Now you're doing business development. You know, how how in the world do I take all that together? And if I, you know, worst case scenario, I had to start all over again with a, another company. You know, you, you don't just jump up to chief whatever you know role. And so, um, so I just kind of found myself taking stock. Um, I'm 35. I'm I'm still young, but arguably looking down the second half of uh, what should be kind of the best years professionally. And uh, um, so, kind of parked that over there. Um, conversation evolved. She she had happened to join um, a, a, a boutique uh, 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 fitness. Uh, uh, it was actually a franchise, um, kind of one of those uh, high intensity training camps, and uh, she loved it. Brought our girls there. Uh, they just they, they the owners were just doing a fantastic job creating a culture that was not only focused on um, you know, I guess women, but especially women that were recovering from you know pregnancy. Which I, I having two little girls and you know wife at home, I can I can't appreciate, but I can I can understand right. And uh, Ashley just made this comment you know out of nowhere, like you know there's 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 got to be something to small business ownership. I mean, how how cool would that be to just that that was your life day to day to, you know, hang out, see your guests, you know, build, build this, be engaged in the community. And, um, you know, again, trigger moment, I just kind of stopped and uh, said, Ashley, you know, well, why not us? Um, you know, I've, I've met folks that have done this. They're, they're not any smarter. They don't have any other advantages that we don't have. And so I, if that was on a Friday afternoon, by Sunday night, I, I hate to say it, but, you know, off to the Google machine. I think I had built out a 10-year pro forma. I had accidentally discovered an item 19. I didn't know what an FPV was, but, you know, I, I, I just poured myself into um, researching what opening up, a, a you know, maybe something in fitness would look like. And uh, sorry, I know this is long-winded, but <laughs> you know, I very quickly had a conversation with my younger brother, um, who, you know, very, very, very much, uh, I think, kind of an entrepreneur spirit in within you know his own heart and uh yeah you know, he gave me that confidence and that encouragement and just said you know I, I think you're on to something you know and i would encourage you to stay down this path but i would really challenge you to make sure that fitness is something that you want to get into don't don't let ashley's excitement you know just the just because you go to the gym every day you know don't don't let that cloud your vision of what you might be looking for um and that really made sense i didn't want to hear it necessarily but um i i really tried to embrace kind of his his words and um lo and behold i you know go back to this and you know sure surely there's a podcast out there or something where you know there perhaps there's something with franchising i kind of like that idea of having some some guidelines some some systems and processes kind of uh, uh the, the bumper lane so to speak i just, I just want to get out and pull and get a feel for it um and discover the franchising one-on-one podcast so and I'm sorry, what was the name of that podcast you discovered again? So, um, <laughs> so no, the, it, the, you're talking about a, a couple of things there, but you, when we first talked, you were like, it was, there was, there was a definite interest in, in the fitness. Um, we'll get into which franchise you own, but it has nothing to do with boutique fitness, right? Um, talk about kind of that journey from, you're, and you, you do have a diverse background and kind of roles from from a corporate standpoint, but I guess, I guess maybe this helped because you you weren't in the most sexy industry in the world from a corporate standpoint, right? Um, yeah. And you come in kind of thinking, hey, we really like this boutique fitness. 
how did that evolve? How, was that a hard transition for you to get out of what you thought it was going to be and then be open to what it ended up being? What was, what was that like for you? Yeah. You know, and I, I think I shared this with you, um, through the process, Tim, I think one, in some ways, one of the best things that I did is I, I well, I, I probably listened to a good 15, 20 episodes before I reached out and gave you a call. Um, you know, so, so, so the negative side of that is, yeah, what are, what are you doing? Reach out, you know, kind of start the process. But I guess from the, the on, on the flip side though, I, I, I was actually, I, I didn't know it all, but I was, I, I was prepared. I think even for that very first conversation, I, I had heard a couple of in their words episodes. I'd gotten kind of a feel for, um, you know, how, how your process works. Admittedly, I actually reached out to a, a, a franchise or that you had on the show, and that's that's you know, hey, I, who, who's Tim? Tell me about this guy, you know. And, and it was that um, group that said, oh, you know, he's, he's like a matchmaker. You know, if this is something that you want to explore from a holistic level and understand what opportunities might be out there, give Tim a call. Um, so, you know, when we started our process, kind of, you know, getting back to your question. Uh, yeah, you know, I think that's, I, I, I told you that by day one, and I'm sure we'll explore this at, at some point in our, our chat here, but, you know, I think I remember saying, I, I don't have some crazy idea. I, I, there, there's nothing out there that I can think of where I have the, the, the passion, you know, is kind of the word. I, I don't know what I'm passionate about. And, um, we'll kind of park that maybe for, a, a, a five minutes from now or so, but, uh, you know, I, I, I did step into this um, process knowing that I, I, I you know, knew one thing is that I have to remain in a seek to understand kind of exploration mode and just trust in the process and, and do not let myself get into decision making mode. Um, you know, having said that, in the back of my mind, we talked about this, you know, the entire time, and this kind of came from a conversation that I had with my dad. I, I, I reached out to him very early on, kind of right as we were connecting. And, kind of said, Hey, I'm, I think I was looking for him to tell me no, actually. I think I was looking for him to say, Steven, like, ah, get your head out of the clouds, get back to, <laughs> you know, that's, that's, that's so far kind of out of reach. And, and I got the exact opposite. You know, he had shared that, uh, no, I, I think there's absolutely something there. I think you should pursue it. Um, my, my biggest advice to you though, is you've got to make sure that you find something that you can get out of bed for and something that you use, you know, um, frequently. Um, so, you know, I, I don't know if I'm answering the question, you know, per se, but I, I, the best thing that I did stepping into this process was trying to, you know, I had an idea of how you work. Um, I, I, I knew that you would approach me and say, Steve, you're going to roll your eyes at one of these. And I, I really tried hard to just kind of remain in that, again, seek to understand space and just be very open and vulnerable uh, to the process. Um, yeah. Had some ideas here and there, had some some areas of interest that I even marked, you know, kind of on, on, on the profile. But, um, you know, I didn't let that sway me one way versus the other. Yeah, no. And I think that you did a fantastic job of having an open mind. Um, and again, like I always say there's a difference between asking questions and questioning, right? And you were always asking questions. How do I seek to understand? How do I seek to learn something else? And which is, which is, which is perfect. And then you talk about the, you just said the word passion a couple of times, right? Well, well, you know, Hey, did we have a passion for fitness? Well, yes. Okay. But what's, what's that get out of bed test thing for you with this? And what happens so many more, so many times is what people think the passion is, isn't really the passion. It is some of the things. And as, as, as we got going into this, you've, you've talked even today, but throughout the process, connecting in the community, right? You're somebody who wants to get out and, and be that face of the business, build those referral sources and partners, great customer service, um, really doing that, um, understanding the beauty behind an industry that isn't the shiny, sexy object, right? Um, but are something that's needed. It's never going away, having a chance to have a variety of different things. Those were the things that we kind of kind of honed in on that were like, aha, that that's the passion that's going to get me out of bed. The, the business, what the it is as far as what they sell is like, not not completely immaterial, but it's it's certainly it's certainly down the down the list a little bit. Hey everyone, I wanted to take a quick break from our podcast to tell you about our amazing friends at Entrepreneur. If you're looking to become a franchisee or simply learn more about business ownership and 
guys, let's be honest. You're listening to the Franchising 101 podcast, so we know you have some interest in this. But I really encourage you to go to entrepreneur.com to check out all of their great content and resources. Seriously, Entrepreneur has everything, all the way from a bookstore to the best podcast webinars and videos, plus information on upcoming events and the latest articles that seriously, they cover all aspects of franchising and business ownership. If you're having trouble deciding which franchise is right for you, start with Entrepreneur's renowned Franchise 500 ranking, which highlights the best franchises of 2022. For 45 years and counting now, Entrepreneur has been and continues to be the most widely recognized and respected authority in the franchise market. Digital and print subscriptions are available so you never miss out on anything. So seriously, what are you waiting for? Go to entrepreneur.com right now and learn more. Yeah, no, and that's 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 spot on. Like I said, I mean, <laughs> coming from the space that I came from, you know, it, 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 like I said, it's not a, a traditionally... Um, it's not a sexy industry, right? But once you're on the inside, it's it's nearly a recession proof. You know, the opportunity to work with some of the best, you know, most sophisticated clients and 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 teams dedicated to you know innovation, for example, or, or sustainability efforts. It's one of those things. Once once you're in, you're in. You understand it, and and, and your your definition of sexy, you know, changes. Um, and I still have my list. It's right here in front of me. You know, kind of through through, through the process. Eventually, you know, we really honed in on um, and we keep up with that. What are you looking for out of the business model? And we came back to this constantly, even when we arrived at what became kind of my decision. And you know, I don't want to give away. I keep, keep a little bit of uh, a build up here, but you know, I, I for, for sure I was looking for something that you know I didn't have to go back to school for necessarily. Something kind of simple enough that I could wrap my my, my head conceptually around the business model. Um, low startup costs, uh, recurring revenue was a big one for us. Um, something where I can truly be, you know, engaged in my local community. That's that's kind of one of the biggest pain points and why I got here. Right, um, uh, uh, being a great employer in the area, uh, having the opportunity to be generous and you know charitable. Um, obviously, something with you know consistent and you know solid margins. Um, and you know, we, we there was a couple of different in, in, industries that we definitely had an in, in, in interest in, but. Uh, it was those larger kind of key pieces of the business model that, you know, jumping ahead here, I think that remained consistent and, you know, all, all the ones that we looked at. Yeah. And I just was scrolling back through my, for my notes. And when we get to the point of introducing people to franchises, usually three or four, kind of depending on how things shake out. But I, I typically will ask people, like, I'm going to give like a three, four, five minute overview of here's the franchise. This is what they do what they look for, why I think it might be a match. And there are at times one of those franchises that people think we are just absolutely lost our mind. That's terrible. I don't understand it. To which I usually find a play way to say, I don't care. Right. Um, so we, but, but I'll kind of ask like, how do we rank them? And you bizarrely are in, in the minority in this because I look back, the one that you owned was ranked number one that day. Um, as we went through this, a couple of them kept like it kept getting closer, right? There was maybe we might have been like one A, one B for a while, but ultimately there was a little separation, and it really hit all of those things that you just talked about. So let's let's do the big reveal. The you are a brand spanking new franchise owner of yeah the the grounds guys part of uh, neighborly. Awesome. So I'm putting you on the spot because you're not even really fully into training yet. What's what's your 30 second, 30 second elevator pitch? Geez, Steve, what's grounds guys? Yeah. Yeah. So, so I'd, I'd, I'd say this number one, the grounds guys is part of uh, neighborly brands, which uh, I think is so cool. Um, neighborly is kind of the 800 pound gorilla in the room um, in, in terms of home services, right? They have an, an initiative to truly own the home in the space. So anything that has to do with repairing, maintaining, or enhancing the home. The Grounds Guys is a full service lawn and landscape company. And uh, I'm going to, I'm going to rip from the president that I heard, um, you know, how, how Josh kind of describes the company. I think, you know, in our space, everybody asks, are you, um, are you residential or are you commercial? Are you a, a, a niche, you know, focus? Do you, you specialize in turf care or weed control or, or, or do, do you do everything? 
And uh, what is so intriguing and where I just feel so at home with this business model is, you know, it, it, it can be all those things. It can be maintenance, it can be build, it can be commercial, it can be residential. Uh, the way that, you know, we approach the market and, and, and the business model, um, you know, it's, it's, it's number one, are, are you dealing with a local decision maker, right? Not bureaucracy, which was kind of, again, one of the pain points coming out of corporate America, right? And uh, number two, are you dealing with someone that has a desire to have an aesthetically pleasing outdoor space? So when you combine all those things and you talk about, hey, yes, it can be commercial, it, it, it can be residential. I'd say residential is definitely the focus. That'll be our, our primary focus uh, for sure. The first 12 months establishing those recurring customer base, building that rapport within the community and getting our name out there. But the uh, the opportunity to take the business to so many different facets of uh, landscaping and outdoor space is just uh, uh, terribly exciting. No, it, and and again, maybe at another date, we can negotiate the trip charge for you from Mesa <laughs> to Pima, Arizona. Um, so we'll, we'll get, we'll get back to my selfish needs later, yeah. but, um, I, some of the subtle things as we go through this process end up being the biggest differentiators, right? And so, and usually things people don't think about. So as you talked about grounds of guys, you know, is it this, is it that? Like the answer is yes, right? It is obviously the, you know, what, what, how do, how do they say it? The, 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 mo, the, the mo and go, right? The basic. Yeah things that you think of from a landscape company, but there's 20, 30 different services that you can do to, it's, it's the one thing I think in neighborly that's both the maintain and the enhance, right? Um, residential, commercial, wherever there's an outdoors, you can be there. And for, for you, that was great to have, like be that basically whatever somebody needs, you can say yes. Um, mm -hmm. Some other people might see that and go, Whoa, 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 whoa. That's too much. I need this one thing that does just this one thing. Right. And until you kind of get in and compare and contrast some things, it's kind of hard to, it's hard to know that. Um, and so again, I always like, it's just, it, it is just hardly ever what people think it's going to be coming into it. So all those things really tied in for you. Um, and, and kind of lo looking at this. And so now we're getting ready to get started. Right. Hopefully, um, First, first part of June, we should have uh, grounds guys of what I don't know what we're calling this yet. Mesa, Scottsdale, Paradise Valley. So basically, if you're in Phoenix and you're on the east side, we we we, we call Steve and he's gonna he's gonna hook you up basically. So yeah, um, yeah. How, how's all that going so far? Right, with getting getting into you're not open yet, but you're kind of getting into the training where I'm, I'm guessing any given moment you feel like your head's going to explode from everything. Um, what's, what's that experience been like for you so far? Yeah. You know, it's, um, it, it, it's been great. Uh, um, uh, interesting for sure. You know, but it kind of goes back to some of the earlier discussions that we had. I think, uh, you know, if I was looking for another job, um, I, I I've always worked for, smaller, mid-sized, privately held organizations. So the thought of going to a just giant publicly traded company, just, just I just don't think was in the cards for me personally. Um, but it's so interesting because when you start looking at it through the lens of, okay, making this investment and going down the path of small business ownership, you know, I don't want to write every process. I don't want to discover a problem, have it be my problem to solve. I've, I've been doing that for 15 years in these kind of small and mid-sized companies. I'm, I'm looking for that structure. And so um, you know, in the short time, you know, a month or so that we've been into kind of the, the, the virtual training, we're, we're, I'm at the point now where things are really starting to ramp up, diving into all the different systems, CRM, financials, just, just all the tools of a you know, small business owner needs. Um, it's just incredible to see the amount of resources and structure in place um, all across the board. You know, my, my initial discussion so far with the franchise coaches and you know, our Sure Start coordinators has been fantastic. The, the, the marketing resources um, you know, just, just top notch. Um, you know, I, I, again, you have the, you, know, you have the buying power of neighborly, which is a $4 billion organization. So when you, you know, you, John Doublebauer, I'm, 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 I've been a guest on, on in, in the past, you may have hit on this, but, uh, even going back to when we narrowed in on, on landscaping, 
I, I, I got to say this in case there's any future grounds guys out there. You know, I think the landscaping industry is something like a, a like a hundred billion dollar industry. But the reality is, is there's probably 500,000 or so mom and pop. You know, if you've got a truck and a trailer and, and slap an LLC on the side and mown, you know, 15 lawns, you're, you're, you're a landscape company. Um, I feel like 100,000 of them are just in Phoenix here alone. So <laughs> when you presented me the grounds guys, I was familiar with it, but it was like, you know, Tim, I, I, I can't gas up at a QT in the morning before 7 a.m. and not see five landscape trucks fueling up for the day. You know, how, how in the world am I going to compete out here? And, um, you know, you, doing the research, getting into, you know, the, the, the franchise itself, going through training, you realize just how, yes, it's a very saturated space, but it's incredibly fragmented, right? And when you look at that $100 billion, you know, space, there's only a, I mean, really a handful Ashley used to work for one of them. There, there's a handful of commercial players that maybe own two, three percent of the market share. Everyone else is these mom and pop businesses that are just kind of r- running all across the board. So kind of taking it back to neighborly, you know, I'm a brand new business. I get to walk into in, insert whatever truck dealership, equipment dealership, um, marketing, you know, ad, ad agency, um, uh, payroll, HR suppliers. And I, I have the purchasing power of a $4 billion organization behind me. So um, it's, 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 it's just an incredible, um, you know, uh, structure and, 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 and systems in place processes support to get you, you know, truly on the path of uh, small business ownership and, 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 and getting, giving yourself a legit shot at uh, success, which again, it, it, we, we looked at a couple home services concepts. We looked at some completely different business models, but uh, you know, no, knowing the structure that was going to be in place behind the business was was definitely um, you know a, a, a big factor in my decision. And uh, it's 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 certainly true. Just going through the initial training. The I think two things there is one as overwhelming as it can be when you're going through the process, especially as you get deeper into it, or you go to the meet the team day. You're like, oh my gosh, look at all of the places that they have support. And and obviously neighborly is just massive, but every every franchise is going to have support in these areas. And then you start getting into training, and you're like, whoa, this is even more than I thought, right? And just there's you just don't have to, you're not on an island. I think it's the beauty of franchising, right? You're not on an island. You don't have to create and yes, you have to be able to figure stuff out, but within the frameworks of that franchise, and you always have somebody to call within grounds guys and neighborly you've got teams of people to call right but one of the i think the the concern my as 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 you probably know one of my favorite words when people are like oh i got a concern here right okay is is that a deal breaker or do we need more info right is with many businesses competition like oh my gosh there's so many landscapers oh my gosh do you know why because Everybody has an outdoors, right? Um, and then you start looking into really the data and you're like, goodness gracious, if we had 1% of the market, 2% of the market, um, we can have this big business. There can be, you know, 50 other companies out there fighting for the rest of it. And there's still there's still space left, right? Then when you come into to play where you're also now for you guys coming in at a higher level. Right, you're not, you're, you're not, you're not the guy in the beat up pickup truck. You're not the kid down the street, right? You're coming in yeah. with al- almost like a borderline arrogance of like, this is just going to be so much better, um, and you're not going to leave. And then you've got all those other services to can that. It can be scary at the beginning when you start seeing like you're like you know I'm rolling into rolling into the quick trip in the morning, and here's all these landscape where I see this one or this one or this one. Okay, well. Yeah, Walgreens went right across the street from CVS, right? <laughs> Wendy's is right next to McDonald's. The, there's right. there's there's a reason because the market will dictate it. You can you're going to get some business just because, and then for for you coming in there, the differentiator with grounds guys, but then the key differentiator in any franchise, it's you and being able to build that great staff, that have the quality, connect in the community have the the passion to be able to do those things that's why that's why you're going to be successful yes the franchise is there to help you all that but it's going to come down to you so it's is, yeah, is why i know you're going to kill it with this yeah i mean we, and we talk about this i think uh you know jokingly in several you know sessions um 
you know, I'll, I'll even pick on our, our, our current setup today. You know, we, we, we have that mom and pop, you know, the crew that comes by. And uh, sometimes I might get a text that morning. Sometimes I get it at 11 p.m. the night before. Sometimes it says, hey, we'll be there when we get there this week. So if I have a speaking engagement, if I have a conference call, if I'm doing a webinar and I have two leaf blowers outside my you know window, that's my problem. <laughs> if I'm not there, I, you know, I, I assume the work got done. I don't know exactly what was done, but the check's under the mat and hopefully we see you again next month. You know, I hate to say it, but that's that's pretty much par for the core in this space. And so, um, which was kind of scary too. And it's like, gosh, you know, is this is this really the space that I want to go into? But as we open up the grounds, guys, um, uh, here in the East Valley, you know, it's it's um, trained employees showing up in uniforms. Um, you know, we're insured, clean, branded trucks and trailers, systems and processes in place to make sure that we are operating to the utmost efficiencies. Um, you know, remaining competitive from a cost perspective because of that buying power. But, you know, Tim, you talk about just the, the, the customer facing technology alone. You know, we, we live in an Amazon-esque world where if I were to order something right now, probably be on my doorstep before I go grab the girls from daycare, right? And, and a picture confirming, hey, this is what we did. This is what was delivered. So the opportunity to, you know, really set yourself apart from, I think, these competitors with just very simple technology that within the grounds guys exists today and just confirm that you're doing what you said you were going to do on time and at a fair price point, perhaps a premium. Um, you know, it's it, like I said, I think it's greenfield in terms of the, uh, the opportunity to make a difference and, and you know, have an impact on a, a, a homeowner, you know, and I think that was the biggest uh, uh, draw for me. I'm a homeowner. I have an outdoor space that we enjoy and I, I want it to look nice. And if I'm going to pay someone to do something that I don't have the time or I don't want to do because I want to be going on a bike ride with my little girls, um, you know, it, it's it's uh, we, we the market's changing. We live in a world where just I think the bar of expectations in the service industry, um, it, it needs to step up. And I think Brown's guys is truly uh, headed the right direction. So it's uh, it's awesome to be a part of that kind of uh, initiative. And let's be honest, you don't care if the landscapers around you keep the bar really low. So it makes it easier for you to just basically, you know, kick, kick, kick their ass and take all the business. So, um, yeah, business. so, um, so, so cool for you kind of share, coming on and sharing this. It's just, it's been, it's been a joy getting to know, getting to know you. I feel like I know your family too, even though I haven't met them. Um, but the, um, Last thing I want to kind of throw at you, because you've gone really kind of full full circle, right? From literally listening to this podcast and like, geez, like, can it can I do it? Oh, wait, show 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 the merch you got there, Stephen. What what do we have for anybody yeah, that's yeah, actually, actually seeing this process. on Spotify? A nice franchising one on one. Uh like <laughs> if I, if if my nine year old here, he'd be uh talking about like, Dad, you need more merch, you need more merch. Um, he literally thinks if we put a merch tab on the Fran Coach website, people are going to be wanting to buy this stuff. So, um, yeah. So if anybody does let me know and he gets 5%, but, um, you went full circle with this. Somebody's out there. Maybe somebody's out there listening to this episode right now. Um, what would be your, your advice? Like, cause you were in that situation, like, geez, do I, don't I, can I, can't I, what would you share with somebody that now that you've gone all the way through this? Yeah, I, uh, I, I appreciate that question. I was kind of preparing for, uh, you know, if, if you did ask me that. So, um, you know, I'll, I'll, maybe I'll answer it in a couple of different lanes. You know, number one, if you're, if you're that, you know, first two, three, four or five episodes in, I mean, you, you, there, there's something there. You're, you're, you're here for a reason. Like Tim says, you're, 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 you're researching. There, there's something bugging you. Truly, you have nothing to lose by having a conversation with Tim and just throwing it all out there. You know, uh, worst case scenario, right? You discover, I don't want to touch this with a 10 foot pole or, or, or you realize, hey, maybe there's something here. And it, it's you, you have nothing to lose to at least explore what what doors might be open. Um, Tim, I told you that I think day one, I was like, you know, hey, I'm going to explore this until someone tells me no or, or, or a door shuts because I'm assuming that's what's going to happen. But I have. I'm the kind of guy where I, I at least need to peek inside that door. And, and you told me, you know, be prepared that you may never hear that, 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 you know, no. Um, so I, I think that'd be step number one, you know, reach out, engage him. Um, 
for those that have maybe started down the process, um, you know, I would encourage them to remain in that seek to understand mode. Um, I had a hard time accepting this myself. Tim will say it, you know, that the, it, it just becomes clear and it really does. Um, you know, but so, so, so remain objective, seek to understand, don't be in decision mode, trust the process and, and it will become clear, but especially as things do become clear. And, and let's say you do narrow in on that one and, and, and you're, you're, you're trying to make that decision to take the leap. Um, you know, th- this is the tough part, right? I think there's, there's a certain perspective of, look, you, you can't steer a parked car, right? So just kind of you know, jump in, but you know, I, 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 uh, I personally, you know, this, I've, I've never done this amount of soul searching, looking in the mirror, really asking myself, you know, Stephen, what do you want out of life? And, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll kind of take it back to our, our earlier reference to passion and I, sorry to pl- pl- plug another podcast, <laughs> Tim. I, I uh, came, came, came across a gentleman, uh, uh, the real Jason Duncan, and he kind of talks about this. Uh, you know, it's geared towards entrepreneurs living that kind of exit lifestyle, and um, you know, truly being kind of that semi-absentee model. And uh, he kind of has his uh, 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 five P's of success is what he'll talk through with uh, entrepreneurs that he has on the show, and it's um, something like you know, passion, knowing the right people, being in the right place, being prepared, and and, and having a plan, but when I heard how he broke down the word passion, that's, that's what helped me kind of step across the line. You know, I think passion is tricky and a lot of people will very quickly associate passion with something that they like, something that they enjoy. You know, I, uh, I enjoy golf, but I'm, I'm not passionate about golf. Um, you know, but by definition, passion is something that you're willing to suffer for something that you're willing to willing to endure. Right. So I think if you're in that space where you're, you're, you're narrowing in on, on something or you're, going down this path and you have that concern of, you know, gosh, what am I passionate about? That's where I was. Um, again, for me, I, I, it came back to I want to be engaged in the community. I, I want to build something that I can put my stamp on it. You know, I, I want to build something that I can potentially pass down to my children. Um, I want to be charitable. I want to be a face in the community. I want to be an employer in the community. I'm not doing this for applause. I certainly hope there's a you know financial benefit in the long run, but you know, I, I want to be able to connect, uh, uh, create those financial benefits for uh, people that I might have the opportunity to in, in, in employ. You know, that, that that's where my passion, you know, really started to kind of come to, to service. And uh, and again, you know, worst case scenario, if everybody called in sick tomorrow, you need to be able to say, yep, I can get out of bed and I can go do that. And, you know, there, there is an element of that because, you know, one of the other concepts that you presented to him, it, it, it made the most from a unit economic perspective, it made the most sense on paper. And we didn't go with that one because I just couldn't, my, my heart wasn't there. Um, and so, you know, for your, your audience, just uh, listen to that gut feeling. But uh, uh, again, you know, you can't steer a parked car. Sometimes you just got to take the leap of faith and, uh, you know, trust in yourself and trust in the process. Yeah. The, the, nobody ever likes it when I say this, but the money follows the fit. And uh, there, and there's probably a handful of things that we talk about throughout the throughout this journey that uh, like, this is why I never do these in video because I don't want to see the facial expressions, right? So it's like the money's going to follow the fit. I promise it will be clear in the end, right? And I know that one is like, ugh, like, but it is it is every single time. And we have a kind of it's on the agenda for one of our podcast episodes coming up is 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 the is the whole fact the the fact and fiction around passion, right? And and it's. It is rarely, I love pets, therefore I need a pet franchise, right? It is what are you doing day in, day out, right? You can still take your business and positively affect your passion area. I love pets and I own this, right? Fran, Fran Coach has nothing to do with college basketball, but that's kind of my passion from my background, right? So we sponsor yeah three different college basketball programs, right? Um, because because we can't, right? And and I like that and being able to be able to make a difference there. The business has nothing to do with that, right? And so so same thing, same thing for you. So maybe it is, hey, it's some something with your with, with your girls down the road, right? It's, you know, like something for golf or whatever, right? Maybe we're gonna, you know, yeah. forks up and we're gonna do something for Sparky over at ASU, right? Whatever, yep. <laughs> whatever that might might look like. Um, You've 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 got you've got that there for you. You've got your business as that vehicle to it. So, um, 
So super cool, man. Thank really thank you so much for 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 coming on. It's been an absolute pleasure getting to know you and being a part of the part of this journey for you. And, and I, again, I just I know you're going to be hugely successful with this. So thank you so much for coming on today. Yeah, Tim. Again, you, you, you've had a significant impact on my life uh, this year, and uh, you know, for those that have the uh, pleasure of working with you, um, especially those early on, uh, you know, again, you have nothing to lose by having a conversation with Tim. So it's uh, whatever I can do to support um, the show and, and, and you, Tim. Um, you know, I'm here for you. Awesome. No, thank thank you very much, and um, you know, everybody listening, I was going to tell you don't bother reaching out, but Steve said so. So. Um, for, for francoach.net, franchising 101 podcast.net. Uh, if you like to read franchising news, not dot net. Um, again, my cheesy joke, it's all dot net for us because we are nothing but net basketball guy. Right. So, um, and anybody that saw me play may know may know that didn't always happen, but nobody listening ever saw me play. So I made every shot. So. Um, Thanks, as always, for everybody tuning in. Uh, We do hope we will hear from you soon. Maybe you get to go full circle and come and be uh, be a guest on the show down the road as well. So uh, thanks for everybody tuning in. Uh, We hope to hear from you soon and help you create your better tomorrow. Thanks so much and have a fantastic day. Thanks for listening to Fran Coach's Franchising 101 podcast, where our ultimate goal is to help educate you on all things franchising so you can create your better tomorrow.